Flower Petal, the Watercolor Edition, written by Lucy A. McDougall, illustrated by Sharia Ramos, read by Ference Della Torre. Creation. Along the quiet banks of the River Dew, a little boat named Flower Petal was created. Flower Petal was not an ordinary boat. She was the most beautiful boat ever built by a boy. A white feather from a swan was her sail, a rusty nail and a dirty piece of foam were her helm. An old piece of wood gave her body form, and to mark her beautiful, Cole, the little boy who had built her, placed a wondrous yellow buttercup between the worn cracks in her stern. She was complete, and during the first few moments of Flower Petal's life, Cole held her in his arms and admired his creation. Soon he began to imagine the places she would go and the creatures she would meet and the exciting adventures a boat of such greatness would surely have. But the moments passed quickly, as good moments often do, and Cole realized it was time for Flower Petal to take her first steps. Carefully navigating the blocks of moss-covered stones that lined the bank of the river, he stepped down, knelt, and gently placed Flower Petal into the water. She wobbled at first until she gained her balance, then slowly she began to move. Through a maze of rocks that pierced the shimmering surface of the river, the current flowed. It dragged Flower Petal towards the center, then back along the north bank. And there, over the thousands of years that had passed, the dew had carved a U-shaped depression into the foot of the old Jura Mountains. Here the water plunged in, forcing Flower Petal into its never-ending whirlpool. She was trapped. Thankfully, Cole was there, and he had seen everything. Scouring the banks looking for a stick to free her, he found what he needed. A long, narrow branch with an end that reminded him of the letter of unending questions. Filled with love for his creation, he found courage. He stepped back onto the stones, knelt down, extended his little arm, placed the branch into the water, and slowly raised Flower Petal by the stern. First steps are rarely easy, and so it was for Flower Petal. She slipped off the end of the stick and bobbed back into the whirlpool. Cole tried again, and then again. He wobbled once and came close to joining his friend in the cool waters. His heart began to beat quickly, and he was getting scared. Please, he whispered as he tried again. This time it worked. Her stern rose out of the water and she slid back towards the center of the river. Full of the excitement that follows the conquest of trouble, Cole smiled and began to yell, Yahoo! Yippee! Hooray! He danced his happy dance while he watched Flower Petal drift around the bend. When he could no longer see her, Cole turned and ran up the embankment onto an ancient path. He followed it up higher and higher. He was now some ten meters above the river when the path opened upon a cliff covered with limestone rocks and patches of wild grass. He looked down, and there over to the right, following the slope of the mountain through the trees and thickets that were beginning to open their leaves, he spotted his beloved craft. She had stopped, caught between the branches of a fallen tree that had reached out from the bank and into the water. Though he was young, his wisdom was blossoming. He realized a stick would not be sufficient this time, and he was worried. Time passed slowly, and as confusion began to rise, tears formed in his innocent gray-blue eyes. He struggled for self-control. Panicking would not help her, he already knew. So like his father had taught him, he took a long, deep breath, calmed himself, placed his fingers upon his chin, and started to think. Hmm, 
What could I do to save her? He thought. Cut down a tree? No, that's silly. It would be too big and heavy, and I don't even have an axe. He thought some more. What else could I do? He looked around for an answer to his troubles. He looked at the river, and then back to the mountain path. He stared at the bleached limestone rocks that were scattered by his feet, and then he screamed, Eureka! Quickly he knelt down and began searching for some loose rocks, for he had just remembered the happy days that he and his father had spent skipping rocks across the surface of rivers and lakes, and he remembered how many times his own rock would not skip, but just plop right into the water, and how his father would tell him, Don't give up, just keep trying. You will learn one day. And whenever he became sad or frustrated, his father would say, Eureka! Cole, did you know that your plop is demonstrating an elementary fact of physics? And he remembered his father becoming all excited, going on and on, using words he did not fully understand. But the few words he did understand were all that he needed. And as he launched his rock into the air, he whispered a little thank you to his father. The rock landed just behind Flower Petal, and like in the experiment his father had described, the waves rolled out in a circle away from the impact. Flower Petal began to move. One more rock he tossed into the air, and again it landed behind her. The waves rolled out, and it was enough. She rode the crest of the small waves and drifted back to the main current of the river. Happy once more, Cole watched his boat float by until he could no longer see her. He turned back onto the path and continued forward, hopping and skipping and jumping along, hopping and skipping to his new song. Flower petal, flower petal, oh where are you? Flower petal, flower petal, I can't wait to see you. Flower petal, flower petal, oh how I love you. That morning in May, the sun was shining, and the sky was a brilliant shade of blue. The air was fresh, and the old forest was alive with the sounds of birds singing their springtime songs. And down the twisting path that descended to the river, there arose the voice of an angel. If miracles did happen, then this was that kind of day for a miracle. The trees ended and the path came upon a clearing with a small stretch of sand that sloped into the water. Cole searched and searched, desperately looking out upon the river for his flower petal. Slowly, she came into view. His smile widened and he began to jump around while his song danced in his head. And that's when the miracle happened. Flower petal broke free of the river's current and drifted to where Cole was standing. It was a glorious moment, the created returning to its creator. His tummy tingled and tickled with excitement. The joy, the exhilaration, the pride that this little boy felt was colossal. And for an instant, the world experienced a perfect moment, the union of a child's joy and pure love. With his eyes radiating, he picked her up and held her close. Her feather brushed against his bottom lip and it caused him to giggle his mind filled with thoughts, and soon he was dreaming of the places she would go and of the creatures she would meet, and the exciting adventures a boat of such greatness would surely have. And as he continued to picture those adventures, it suddenly occurred to him that he was imagining her adventures without him. His smile began to fade, and his happiness melted into sadness, for he had come to realize that no matter how much he loved her, no matter how much he wanted to keep her, a boat so special had been built for a reason. She has a life of adventure to live, he told himself bravely. As tears welled in his eyes, he smiled at her lovingly and said, Maybe you'll make someone else as happy as you have made me. Lacking the excitement he had when she first broke into the water, he caressed her soft feather, kissed her flower petals, knelt down, and carefully placed her back into the river. And with a final whisper, he said, Thank you. That same magic that brought her to him took control and pulled her back into the middle of the dew. He watched patiently, 
and while he watched her drift away, he thought of his father, and he remembered how his father would tap him on the chest just over his heart and say, No matter what happens, I will always be with you when here. Cole placed his tiny hand over the left side of his chest, and he knew that Flower Petal would always be in his heart, and he was certain that one day he would see her again. But today was not that day, for the path had ended. He could no longer follow her, and Cole was very sad. The tears tumbled down the soft, gentle sides of his face, but slowly their meaning changed. The tears of loss mixed with the tears of pride and the combination created tears of understanding. He had created her, he had helped her in times of trouble, and now it was time to let her go. It was Flower Petal's time to embark upon the greatest of adventures. Oh, and what adventures you will have, he thought as his smile returned. Once again showing the strength of the wise little boy that he was, he turned around, brushed aside his tears, and started up the path. Soon Cole was hopping and skipping and jumping along, hopping and skipping and singing his song. Flower petal, flower petal, oh where are you? Flower petal, flower petal, I can't wait to see you. Flower petal, flower petal, oh how I love you. The End Or just the beginning. Other Works in Print by Lucy A. McDougall The Nap Bear in Your Bed The Hug That Saved the World Little Shadow <laughs>